chair over there and one right here. Oh. <laughs> the rose between two thorns. <laughs> I don't see it that way. <laughs> You, but it may require some participation on your part. I mean, you may even have to stand up or something. What's that? You ready? Yeah. How much cash you got on you? How much cash do I have on me? Not a dime. <laughs> you never carry money? <laughs> Very rarely. If it, if it, I mean, there just seems no way to do it. It doesn't mean that I travel free. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get bills for things, but... Uh, no, there's no opportunity. I can't go shopping or anything like that. Do so, you miss it at all? Um, the feel of coin in your pocket? I make up for it because every once in a while people will give me something like a good luck piece or something of that kind, and I put those in my pocket. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, we wanted to ask you on the eve of this Liberty Weekend and your trip to New York to celebrate the statue, a couple of questions about that. Um, do you think it's time for Lady Liberty to put up her hand and say stop to immigration at the Mexican border? No, I think that, uh, uh, well, at any border, I mean, I just make it specific. I, I think that something very definite would go out of America uh, if we ever forgot our heritage. That's sort of like uh, all of us, uh, all of us came here from someplace else or by way of our ancestors, our parents, grandparents, and so forth. And uh, that's a little like uh, getting on board, and once we're on board, let's pull up the gangplank and not let anyone else on. So, Does that mean you wouldn't support the uh, immigration bill? That oh, I'm supporting the immigration bill because I think we have to have some, have rules and regulations. And I think what that bill is meant to correct is uh, uh, some loss of control at our borders where Illegal immigration is uh, is threatening us now. No, we have to have control and have had. It's been traditional in our country for many years. And I agree with that, and I agree with the part of the legislation which says that some people, even if they did illegally enter the country in times past, have established themselves, have been law-abiding, raised children, and so forth here, that uh, there should be a provision whereby their status can be made legal and permanent. Well, this weekend, uh, which is a celebration of liberty and our 100th anniversary of uh, Our Lady in the Harbor, um, do you feel um, that uh, South African blacks should have that same kind of liberation? Yes, and I've never yielded on that, on that point. I know that it is a, a difficult situation. And we want to remain in contact and be able to help uh, bring about a change. Uh, I don't think anyone can support the policy of apartheid morally. And I know that the, the present government has made, taken steps, uh, wants, wants to find a solution to this problem is uh, opposed by another faction that does not want to change, just as uh, uh, sometimes we're opposed here in our own country with uh, political factions. Uh, what things do you point to that they, you say they wants to find a solution? Uh, they've arrested uh, 3,000 people, leaders, black leaders, put them in jail. Um, uh, they've got a state of emergency. Um, how does this balance out? I mean, you say, well, what, what kind of things have we have expressed our displeasure with the state of emergency. What we believe is that there must come a meeting and negotiations between leaders of the various black elements and the present government as to the formation of a government. Now, they've taken such steps as single citizenship already. They've uh, done some things about the onerous pass laws and, and all of that, uh, the right of labor unions and so forth. They've arrested all the labor but union leaders, though, sir. I know, and this was part of, again, this thing that we, 
this emergency thing that we think should be uh, done away with. But I think the complication that is overlooked too often is that it is not solidly a racial division between the white minority and the black majority. The black majority itself is divided. And there are tribal divisions that have a long time heritage there in, in Africa. And we've seen that in the violence between uh, those groups now. So what is really needed is a bringing together of the leaders of those factions mm -hmm. to make sure that they recognize the responsibility that this must be worked out between all divisions and... Is there something the United States can do to, do, to bring that about? Well, we're continuing to try. And I think that we have a better chance by remaining in contact uh, with that government than following the lead that's been suggested up on the hill with some legislation in which we would walk totally away and then be on the outside uh, with no contact at all. I think that uh, we have a long history, a relationship between the two countries, and that this is what has enabled us to uh, keep a hand in so far. Mr. President, if I may speak to that, Ms. Sonia. Um, Vice President Bush said a couple of weeks ago that um, the administration was considering use of the military on drug smuggling. In light of the recent deaths of some famous athletes, I wonder uh, what thoughts you have, whether you've made a decision. Well, remember right now we have some participation by military. And I don't think that he was talking about um, <clears throat> uh, making policemen out of soldiers. You know, we, we had a task force <clears throat> that we set up down when Florida was the great entry point. And it was probably the first most successful uh, working together of levels of law enforcement at, at local, state, and federal, and the various agencies of all of those working together, plus help from the military with radar, Coast Guard, things of that kind. And it was so successful that we now have 12 of those task forces working because of the extensive borders and coastlines that we have. And uh, we're always watching if there are more opportunities for increasing that kind of cooperation uh, to deal with the, the problem of drugs coming into the country. Again, as I say, we want to draw the line at not saying that we're suddenly going to make our military have a police uh, capability. But might you allow the military to use some of its assets, like radar? Well, and uh, yes, and as I say, to increase, if, if increasing that will help, because we already have that at work. I might also add that the military, like every other facet of our society, had its own problem with drugs internally. And they have done a magnificent job. And they have virtually reduced it almost to zero in, in the military. I think what we have to face is there is a limit to what success we can have with simply trying to shut off the inflow of drugs, to take the drugs away uh, from the users. I know that what Nancy's been engaged in is, I think, what ultimately must be uh, the answer, and that is to take the user away from the drugs, to turn the users off. And I think the terrible tragedy of these two young men, uh, and what has happened to them, that maybe their lives would have had and will have a real meaning if we will, from them, move on to utilize all the resources we have. Now, I know that uh, Nancy has uh, participated in, in movements all over the country that are uh, showing remarkable success, the Just Say No uh, movement among children uh, is is having a great effect. The way parents have suddenly moved forward to enter into this, uh, this battle. But that is, that's going to be the only way eventually that we'll resolve it, is when we, the people, 
and as individuals and as groups say, we've had enough of this and uh, we're going to stop feeding the monsters money so they can continue their uh, living in style at the cost of health and, and the life of, of our young people. I would think that these two athletes also, this could be a great example to uh, the athletes in our country, the professionals who are such heroes to our young people and the children, for them to recognize their responsibility and for them to organize and take a position in this fight. New subject. Uh, Soviet dancing of late it seems that you are a madly in love suitor courting uh, this coy woman over in the Kremlin sometimes. You, you two seem to be uh, in your own little dance. Um, what, what are you planning to write to him soon? And yes, we have an answer in which he has made uh, additional proposals with regard to uh, not only the subject of, of arms control, but the other things we discussed at, uh, at Geneva, which have to do with the regional conflicts going on in the world, have to do with human rights and immigration and so forth. And uh, uh, we have that letter in our possession and we're uh, putting together our own reply because, again, I think it opened additional doors that uh, makes me optimistic that we're not only going to have a summit, but that we're, we're going to have a summit where we can reach agreement on some of the things that we uh, obviously are the goals that we share. Uh, we have said from the very beginning that we would like a reduction of nuclear weapons leading to the ultimate elimination of such weapons. Well, now they have said the same thing. And uh, if we both want the same thing, uh, we ought to be able to find a way to reach reach that goal. What will you tell him in this new letter? Well, as I say, uh, this was quite an extensive letter uh, so that he sent. Just got back. Yes, How and I uh, uh, can't remember the exact number of pages, but it was it was quite a packet, and uh, and worthwhile. And so uh, we're studying that and our own reply. And as I say, I hope that this will all become part of the agenda of. A summit meeting. You don't have a Schultz ever Nazi meeting date, do you? Uh, no, that, as you know, they had called off uh, uh, earlier on when we thought it was going to be held in July. We believe that there was some reason for that because of this is a new administration there, and maybe we had uh, been overly optimistic as to how quickly they could get together and and uh, move forward, but. Uh, now, we have reason to believe that such a meeting is possible. This year? Yes. In November, you think? Uh, it could begin then, as far as we're concerned, but uh, no dates have been set. Besides your good lady, Mr. President, who is a, who is a good friend of yours? Who is someone that you call up to talk about uh, those deep nights of the soul when you have those kind of questions? Or do you ever have those? How about what? When you have uh, um, sort of questions or or uh, when you feel uh, introspective, or perhaps you never do feel introspective. <laughs> Who do you talk to besides uh, Mrs. Reagan? Oh my. Well, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm surrounded here by some very remarkable people who made great sacrifices in order to uh, come into government. Yes, and, but I mean your best friend. I mean, one always has uh, a well, best yes. friend. Well, I have to say I, uh, I'm very blessed with a number of friends. and. Uh, and I'm in frequent contact uh, uh, with many of them, and I don't know that I uh, should go. If I start throwing names around, then I may have to miss one. But uh, no, I have a circle of, I've been very blessed with a circle of friends that are very uh, dear to me. And, and uh, as I say, we, we stay in, in contact. Uh, on that line, uh, how frequently you, do you talk to, to President Nixon, to Mr. Nixon? Well, as you know, we try to keep all the former presidents informed of things that are going on, check with them, get their thinking and so forth. And uh, uh, he is one of those, and particularly has he uh, been helpful in, in, um, uh, on foreign affairs. Any do you mean to uh, suggest that you talk to President Carter as well? Yes. And 
Uh, I have personally, and but uh, mainly this is carried on by uh, others in our NSC uh, group who uh, keep them informed. And, but our impression uh, was that your relationship with Nixon was more in the manner of picking up the phone. Well, I have done that because uh, uh, he and I uh, had a long friendship that his fellow Californians that went back many years, long before either one of us, I think, ever thought we would be in the present position. and. Uh, so there is a, uh, I think, a, a closer bond. Uh, my acquaintanceship with, uh, with the most recent uh, is, is very slight. I knew him slightly or for a short time uh, when we were governors together. And uh, then my relationship with uh, President Ford was much more recent Did than that. Did you give him any advice during this recent Soviet dancing? Uh, no, no, there haven't been any. Mr. President, we had uh, good news this morning in the release of an American uh, in Beirut, um, not usually counted among the Americans held there. Um, wondered what your view is about whether that will uh, improve the chances of the others. Well, I hope so. I, I didn't, I didn't know about this. I've been in meetings all morning, so uh, I haven't been informed of that. Uh, you're giving me the news now for the first time. But yes, that would, the only problem is there are so, such a variety, there is such a variety of groups um, that what one group may do uh, may not have an effect on the other. Now, we know with those hostages that we've been uh, working so long and so hard at, the. Uh, the four or five that are still there, um, we know that that particular group is the one known as the Hezbollah. Uh, and uh, there has never been a minute, contrary to what some people think, that we have not been working and following every lead we can that could lead to their uh, release. And we've had some sharp disappointments when we thought maybe we were making some progress, but uh, uh, those disappointments don't stop us from continuing to try. So I'll have to wait till I find out uh, who this individual is and uh, what group held him. was not a hostage because he was not politically held. He was something to do with drugs. Oh. He got involved there with a faction or something. Oh. He'd been held since the fall. We hadn't been directly involved in it except to pass along the message that to where we could that we'd like him free. Uh, well, that doesn't any, sound. Do you have any news or hope on the other five? Well, as I say, I, uh, there isn't anything I can talk about except that we continue following every lead, every channel that that uh, seems to offer an opening. I wanted to ask you about Mr. Waldheim and whether you think he did anything wrong during World War II. Well, the evidence certainly has been inconclusive, and uh, uh, we know that he was a member of the military, but then uh, so were a great many uh, people. But uh, so far, there seems to be great controversy over to what extent he might have participated in the uh, terrible deeds that made up the Holocaust, and until we do know, I, I think that uh, we should hold our fire. So you would have no objection to meeting with them either here or abroad? Well, I have no plans for, for such a thing, but uh, uh, we continue to, again, uh, listen, and I think some investigation is going uh, forward in our own Justice Department to see if we can find out uh, because we do have some laws that are based on, on war crimes. And so we are trying to find out for ourselves, legally, what this position is. Um, um, I mean, may I, okay. just, may sure. I just top that with one thing, though? We must remember uh, our relationship with Austria is a relationship between two nations, and Austria and the United States have had a friendly relationship, and one which we uh, hope will be maintained. Um, 
The uh, shuttle. Any thought of? Are you, have you made a decision on whether to replace the shuttle and build a fourth orbiter? Oh, well, my own personal desire would be that we c can go forward with what had been a tremendously successful program. Uh, no decision has been made. We've turned over the uh, uh, Rogers report to NASA and to Jim Fletcher there and for him to take action on the things that are called for in that. One of our problems is that this tragedy has brought about a, a backlog of satellites uh, for transport into space. And this may call, in an, in an effort to reduce that backlog, may call for some uh, immediate emphasis on unmanned launchers. And all of this is in the mill right now, and no final decision has been made. Recent space disasters could impact the SDI program. Does it trouble you that there are articles uh, being written, America can't get anything into the sky, how could we possibly have a defense uh, shield? Well, uh, I think before we get around to anything of that kind, um, we are still in such a state of research, although I, great progress is being made. I am amazed, but uh, we're still, we still have some years of research ahead of us on this before, and I think the other problem will be taken care of long before uh, there's any need for testing. We also want to ask you some personal, some personal questions. questions. Um, you've been an actor and a president. Is there anything that you wished you had been that you haven't been? Well, maybe better at all of them. Uh, Is there any other profession that you'd like? No, to I'll tell you again. I've. Uh, the, uh, the Lord has been very, very good to me. I, uh, when I was a sports announcer, I loved that and uh, had believed that that would probably be my career on out and I was very happy with it. And then the opportunity came to switch to what originally had been a love of mine, acting. And uh, I enjoyed that very much. I was a reluctant entrant into public life. I never believed for one minute that I would ever be tempted to want to serve in public office. I, as I say, I was so happy in what I was doing. And I was, I was really kind of dragged kicking and screaming into seeking the governorship and thought that what I was doing was a kind of very temporary thing because uh, it was put to me on the basis that, uh, with our party very divided after the 64 campaign, and uh, at odds that I might be able to uh, help bring the party together, uh, and that I offered a, a, a chance for victory in that gubernatorial race. And I've often said that uh, I think when I finally grudgingly said yes, that I really thought no farther than the election. They kept talk, stressing that so much that it wasn't until after I'd said yes that I said, hey, if I win this, <laughs> it goes on beyond November. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, we were blessed because it was only after a few months of uh, the governorship that Nancy and I one night sitting in the living room in Sacramento looked at each other and decided that what we were doing made everything else we'd been doing look dull as dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now, now you're in the White House. So how does yes. that, uh, uh, you know, with the, the whir of choppers, uh, the ruffles uh, and flourishes, uh, how does that make the governorship look and all the things in the past? Well, I tell you, I'm very grateful for that period there because uh, I think the closest thing to the presidency in, in line of a job uh, is being a governor. There you sit at a desk in which the buck does stop when it gets there, and uh, there's a great similarity. We are a federation of sovereign states, and so the governor sits closest to the salt uh, in his state, above anyone except the president. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Karen mentioned the whir of helicopters. I've often wondered how you feel when you come back from Camp David and the helicopter lands and the, the noise is, is horrendous and reporters are shouting questions at you. What goes through your mind when that happens? Well, of course, it, there is a difference in uh, size and opulence and so forth of this office, but uh, uh, as I say, you're prepared for some of the things. It wasn't the great surprise that it must be to some other people who had not previously sat there and known that every day someone was going to put a schedule in front of them of what they were going to be doing every 15 minutes. Uh, I will say this, however, you, it took me quite a while uh, to not turn around and look behind me when they played ruffles and flourishes. <laughs> I was still wondering who they were doing that for. Uh, and it, well, I, I guess I can only tell you that the way I accept this is that maybe some people become president, I don't know. I think that the presidency is an institution over which uh, you have temporary custody. Speaking of that temporary custody, how would you like to be assessed, say, in 2050? How would I like to be assessed? I don't let myself think about that much. I just hope they spell my name right. Uh, How do you feel about your son going around in underwear? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have to remember his earlier training as a, as a dancer. He was, uh, he was pretty fully dressed in his <laughs> viewpoint, but he also was uh, doing a takeoff on a current movie. Uh, so it's show business. Huh? And, yes, and I, and I thought he did quite well. I was, I was, as a matter of fact, a little surprised. Surprised? Uh, at that particular, the way he carried off that takeoff on the, on the movie. Mrs. Reagan said when I was with her in the Far East that she travels with a photograph of you always. Uh, do you travel with a photograph of her when you're away? Um, no, because I don't carry a billfold. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she does carry a purse. But I'll tell you, any time I travel, uh, I wear a particular pair of cufflinks. They were cufflinks given me, given to me by Nancy, and uh, they are made in the image of a page of a calendar in the month of March, with a little stone on the fourth of March, which is our wedding anniversary. Huh? What is the stone? Amethyst, which is my birthstone. So, uh, uh, any time uh, that I'm getting aboard Air Force One now, I, uh, and before, long before that, mm -hmm. ever since uh, I received them, my travels, uh, I have always worn those. Did she give them to you? Mm hmm. Um, five times, yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, I hear you bought a house in L.A. Is it near the old no, one? No, we're still looking. Oh, you are? Yeah. Paul's real weird, huh? Uh, oh, I'm still yeah. hemmed in here. Yes, don't walk away without unbuttoning. Government <laughs> property? <laughs> well, if you need anything, transcript or anything, or your date to no. get it. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We appreciate it. Well. I didn't bring the red gloves today. I thought maybe the hat would be better. Yeah, but <laughs> we didn't notice the hat. <laughs> didn't notice? <laughs> Yes, I looked down right away for the minutes. <laughs> well, pleasure. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Mr. President. Good to meet you, sir.